Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to the first fantasy romance reading vlog of 2023. I'm so excited to be back at it. I think that this is maybe my fifth or sixth time doing a fantasy romance specific reading vlog and they are my absolute favorite. Fantasy romance is my favorite genre. It is the love of my life and I am so so excited to be focusing on fantasy romance this week. So let's get straight into it. The first book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog is a book that I've wanted to read for such a long time. It has been on my TBR for a very, very long time, and I'm so, so excited to finally be picking it up. First book that I'll be reading in this vlog is going to be Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. This is the first book in the Bargainer series, so I am actually going to be one of the co-hosts on my friend Sahar's fantasy romance book club as we read the Bargainer series. So we are going to be reading the first book, Rhapsodic, this month, and then the next book, which I believe is something him, a silent him, something like that. The second book next month, so on and so forth. I think there's three or four books in this series, but I am so, so excited to be partaking in Sahar's book club and to finally be reading this book. So this book is a dark fae enemies to lovers romance. Absolutely. Like that is the most beautiful sentence I think I've ever heard. And I've just heard really, really great things about the series as a whole. So this is a series that is on Kindle Unlimited. And I have read one other book by Laura Thalassa and that was Pestilence, which is the first book in the Four Horse series. I did like it. I believe I gave it four stars. It didn't really stick with me a ton, I will say, but like I enjoyed my time while I read it. I do think that this is Laura Thalassa's more popular series, so I am hopeful I will end up loving this series even more. So this book, as far as I know, I haven't started reading it yet or anything. I'm actually about to get onto sprints on Sahar's channel so that uh, we can all start the book together for her book club. But as far as I know, this book follows our main character. Her name is Callie, and she lives in a world where people and end up kind of gaining favors from this being called the Bargainer. And you sort of collect these beads and Callie has a lot of beads. So she does owe the Bargainer quite a bit. Well, he finally comes to collect and things happen. I don't really know, but I'm excited to find out what that is. Also in this world, we have a lot of fey warriors who end up disappearing and there's some mysterious circumstances around that. So I think that this book is really interesting. I think it has a lot to offer. The plot really, really intrigues me and I'm excited for the romance. I have heard people call this a dark actar, which is is a very big statement, so I'm excited to see how that lives up. But all I know is we have a winged fae male love interest, and truly, that is all I need in this life of sin. So I am very, very excited to start this book. I'm not sure what else I'm going to be reading in this vlog. I do have a couple ideas, but per usual, we will just see where the wind blows us in this vlog, and I will just mood read through the rest of this. So we're starting with Rhapsodic. I'm very excited. As I said, I am going to get onto Sahar's channel. We are going to be doing some reading sprints and starting this book, and I'm super, super excited to do that. So I will talk to you guys after sprints and I'll kind of let you know my first thoughts of Rhapsodic thus far. Hey guys, so time for my first check-in for Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. So last night, as I said, I was on sprints with Sahar and Sarah and Hannah and Cammie, and I had a really, really great time, and I am very happy to report that so far I am absolutely loving Rhapsodic. I'm actually enjoying it more than I expected to. I have been really, really highly anticipating reading this book, but just because it has so much hype, and I did read one other Laura Thalassa book, and that was Pestilence, and it was good, but like not a fave, not a book that I think about a ton. So I am about a third of the way done with the book. I'm on page 130. And let me talk about the plot a little bit more now that I've read some of it. So this is a like paranormal urban fantasy romance, I would say, and we have dual timelines. So in one timeline, it is about eight years ago and our main character, Callie, she has just gone through something very traumatic. She calls on the bargainer for help and he kind of helps her deal with the situation. And that kind of begins their relationship and friendship. She ends up owing him because he does kind of give out these magical IOUs. And then over the years, we see their relationship and friendship develop because she does start to call on him more and more often and they start to kind of just spend more time together and get to know each other. I really, really like that aspect because besides what's happening in present day, we actually get to see the development of their relationship, which is really, really interesting. And I'm just really, really liking that aspect. In present day, Callie is actually like a supernatural private investigator. She is a siren and so she uses her compelling abilities to get like confessions out of criminals and things like that. And she runs this alongside one of her best friends who 
also has supernatural powers. I feel like in the modern day world that we are in, like supernatural abilities are kind of a known thing, I think, but not, maybe there's limited knowledge. So in present day, the bargainer finally comes to collect all of the IOUs that Callie has accumulated. She has like 300 IOUs that she is going to have to repay for. And the bargainer needs her help. As I said in the synopsis of this book, it's not a spoiler. In the bargainer's world, which is this like fairy realm, which sounds really cool. There are a bunch of fae warriors going missing and the bargainer has like a limited ability to find out what is going on. So he needs Callie and her siren abilities to talk to people that he can't really talk to and get answers that he cannot get himself. So it's really, really good so far. And what I'm loving, as I kind of said earlier, I like that in present day, we have this plot going on. We have Callie and the bargainer. They have this complex relationship, but there is this whole other kind of mystery aspect happening. I think that Callie is maybe going to be going to this magical realm, which I'm really excited for because it sounds amazing. But then also we get to see how their relationship developed over the years through the flashback scenes that we get. And it's nice because we are getting those like emotional connections. We're learning who both of them are as characters and then seeing them in present day, there's this tension, there's this confusion. You're not really sure like, okay, what happened between them? Are they friends? Were they lovers? I don't really know, but I really, really like that. I think that those two things together are just making this a really interesting story and just such an addicting writing style. I am getting through this book really, really quickly. It is just so, so digestible. There's a lot of tension in this book and I cannot wait to see what happens between Callie and the Bargainer. The Bargainer, unfortunately, is not a dark haired love interest, but he does have white hair. And so I'm imagining Rowan Whitethorn, which is always a good time. So I'm really, really excited by him, his realm that he comes from, his powers and all of that. And I'm just so, so excited to see where this book goes. I definitely did have like a little bit of a preconceived notion that it would be very similar to Pestilence, where Pestilence is a like fantasy romance, I would say, but it's mostly just romance. There's not a lot of plot, but I'm happy to report that there is plot. There is stuff going on here. I definitely think that the romance is like at the forefront for sure. It is heavy on the romance, but we do have something interesting happening in the background that I'm super intrigued about. I like that. There's a bit of mystery and intrigue. We have magical creatures. We have different fairy courts. Like all of this is really, really working for me. So I'm very excited to continue reading and hopefully it just gets better and better. So that is the update for now. I am going to go read more of this, maybe get to like the 60 or 75% mark. And I will check in with you guys then with more thoughts. So time for another reading check-in. This will be a quick one. I don't have a ton to update on Rhapsodic. I actually just got done finishing my weekly reading vlog. That should be up now. So I had to take a bit of a pause on this vlog, but I am now back on my fantasy romance BS and no place I would rather be. So I've read a little bit more of Rhapsodic, not much. I think like I read 30 pages last night and I do plan to get quite a bit of this book done today, but I just wanted to touch base and let you guys know how it's going, how I'm feeling still. So it is still going going very, very well and continually am just feeling more drawn into the story. I'm really, really liking the marriage of plot and romance in the story. As I was saying earlier, I think that that continues to be well developed, both the plot and the romance. They're interesting, they're enticing, and they're weaving together really, really nicely. I am kind of at the part now where our main character is going to the other world, and that's not a spoiler, it's on the back of the book, but she's going to the other world with Dez to kind of investigate these missing fey warriors. And I'm so, so curious how Laura Thalassa is going to build this world and what it's going to look like and what Callie's interactions are going to be. So I'm very, very excited for that. Also, this is kind of like a slow burn and nothing has really happened yet between Des and Callie. And I'm just like, I'm ready, I'm waiting. I'm excited. Des is a great, great romance anti-hero and I am all about it. So I will hopefully get a big chunk of this book done today. And then today is Friday and tomorrow I am going to go home and visit my family. It's my mom's birthday. So we're gonna go out and have a little girl's night. And so I probably won't read it all tomorrow, but I'll be back on Sunday and I'll probably check in with you guys then. And hopefully I'll have finished Rhapsodic and I'll start another book. I'm having a problem and it's a great problem, but I'm having a problem with deciding what I want to read next in this vlog because there's been a lot of fantasy romance that's just like been on my feed lately that my friends have been reading. Hannah just got me to buy Fear the Flame by Olivia Daring, I believe is her name. And yeah, I've just got like a lot of different things on my mind. So who knows what we will be reading in this vlog next, but it's a good problem to have. I just love fantasy romance so much. It makes me so happy. So that is the update. I am going to go for a walk because it's really, really nice out and I'll read more of Rhapsodic tonight and then I'll talk to you guys soon with some more thoughts.
beautiful friends. It is time for more reading updates. I have interesting reading updates at this point. So number one, I did finish Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. I finished it last night and I feel very conflicted about this book. The last time I talked to you guys, I believe I was on page like 150 around there. So I was about a third of the way through this book. And at that point, I was very excited by this book. I was really, really enjoying it. I was liking the way the plot was written. I was liking the romance. Everything was working for me for the most part. You know, I didn't quite know. I was still only in the first third of the book, but I did like it. However, after finishing the book, I don't love it quite as much as I did in the beginning. I do want to talk about the pros of this book first. So so the biggest pro is I really do like the plot of this book. I am excited by it. I am curious to see what's going to happen in the next book, which I will be picking up in February. And overall, like, I think it's an interesting idea. I like this other world that we have. I like the supernatural creatures. I like learning about Callie and her siren abilities and what her role is going to be in the future, as well as Des. And I really like those aspects. I am excited by the plot of this book. My biggest thing that I don't like about this book, and unfortunately it is just like affecting my own overall enjoyment of the book is the dialogue in this book is just not great and it's a bit cringy. It's a bit too cringy for me and I'm just, it's pulling me out of the story is what I'm finding and that is where the biggest problem lies. I don't find that the things that I'm enjoying about this book are outweighing the like cheesy, cringy, over the top at times dialogue. I just don't like the way that some of the dialogue is written. I don't love the way that some of the characters are written. Like I'm not super obsessed with that. I was really, really hoping to absolutely fall in love with this book and give it five stars and I had the highest hopes. I do like this book. I think that it has positives. I just also think that it has negatives. So it's like a very fine, very meh experience. And I decided to give this book three stars. I liked it, but there are some definite flaws within the book that I found and that were a little bit distracting. It did take away from my enjoyment. So it's kind of my overall feelings, but I am hopeful. I'm excited for the next book. I want to see like, okay, where's this world going to go? Where's the plot going to go? Maybe there will be some growth and development in some of the areas that I wasn't like obsessed with. We'll see. You know, I'm an optimist. I do like this world. And I, I do want to say like, I don't hate this book at all. And I'm looking forward to continuing on the series. I am just like a little bit disappointed with how it left me feeling. And I just, yeah. The dialogue was cringy, you guys, for me. I just, it was distracting from my enjoyment of the book overall. So that's that. I don't know, but hopefully the next book will be better. Okay, so the next book that I will be reading in this fantasy romance reading vlog, it's been on my TBR for a while and I've been hesitant to start this book and whether I even wanted to read it. But I did start it last night and I will say so far, I am very pleasantly surprised by the book. I think it's really fun. And that book is, okay, it's by Holly Renee and I actually have to look up the title. It is called A Kingdom of Stars stars and shadows. I will put the cover up. I love this cover and every time I see it on Goodreads I've been like god I need to read that book. But the reason that I've been hesitant to pick it up is because the reviews are extremely mixed and I've seen some negative reviews for it that have kind of just influenced me a little bit to put this book off but I was like you know what I really want to avoid if I'm interested in a book but I see a ton of negative reviews for it. Oftentimes I just like won't end up picking up the book and I kind of want to avoid that. I kind of want to still give books a chance because books are so subjective and everyone feels so differently about them that if I'm interested in a book I do want to give it a fair shot you know give it give it a try even if I see negative reviews for it and this is a book that kind of falls into that category I had seen a lot of negative reviews and I tend to be somebody who if I see like two three star reviews right off the bat on Goodreads I'll just be like eh, like I'm not gonna pick this up but I was like you know what I'm curious about it so I'm gonna give it a shot and I started the book last night I am on page 50 and so far I am actually really enjoying my time I will say I think I can kind of tell why it has like lower reviews and it is a book that I think is just pretty like surface level and it's just gonna be like a fun time. There's not really complex world building so far or magic systems or in-depth like getting to know a character. I think it's all pretty surface level and fun and like the romance is very much at the forefront and I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that there can be lots of different type of books that serve different type of purposes and I think that sometimes you read like a really epic fantasy romance that's really in-depth and amazing and 600 pages and all of that. And then there's this book, which is like 250 pages. And I think it's just really fun so far. I'm going into it with that impression. And honestly, I am liking it thus far. I was talking to Sam earlier today and she was like, she saw that I was reading it because I posted it on my story. And she was like, oh, I really loved that. Like it was really fun. But she said, I can see why people would hate it though. And so I am kind of curious to get more into the book and see if I go with what Sam was thinking or if I do end up hating it. But like so far, I think it's fun and I can get why somebody might not love it. But I think if you're like, you know what, I want a fun 
lighthearted, low stakes fantasy romance, and it's only 250 pages, then this might be the book for you. I'm only 50 pages in though, so I probably shouldn't be like trying to recommend it to you guys already, but I've just, I don't know, I, it's been fun so far and I don't really have any issues with it. I've heard that it's like a short, spicy fantasy romance. So go into it with that mindset, but I don't know. I'm intrigued thus far. Let me talk about the plot really quick. So our main character, her name is Adara, and she is star blessed, I believe. She's a human and she lives right next to a fey realm. And when she was very young, it was discovered that she was star blessed and her mother basically agreed to give her to the fey royalty and she's going to marry the prince and he is going to feed off of her and hopefully restore the fey's power. The fey's power over the centuries has kind of been waning and the nearby vampire court is sort of threatening and looming and they wanna gain their fey power back so that they can defend themselves against the vampires. So there's fey and vampires in this book. I haven't met the vampires yet, so I'm not really sure what role they're going to play, but they are kind of a threat to the fey people at large. And they think that if the prince and Adara get together and he feeds off of her, that that will restore the fey to their kind of rightful power level and it will save the day. So that is the story thus far. It is very kind of like classic fantasy romance. We have like a marriage of convenience, regular human girl with some sort of like ambiguous powers at this point. She does not want to be in the Fey realm. She does not want to help them. She is very upset that her mother kind of sold her off to this Fey royal family. And there is a little bit, I think there's going to be a bit of a love triangle here in this book. That's kind of what I am gathering so far. And I think it's been really fun so far. I don't think this book is going to change my life in any way. That's kind of what I can tell from it thus far. But I'm having a good time and it's a pretty quick read. It was very easy to get into, not super complicated. And sometimes you just need that. So I am hopefully going to make some headway in this book today. I'm reading it on my Kindle and I would like to get maybe halfway or 75% of the way through the book and let you guys know my thoughts further, but I think it's fun so far. So today's Tuesday actually, and tonight I am going to a concert and it's for an artist that I have never heard of. And my friend just like bought tickets and was like, hey, do you wanna go to this? And I was like, sure. I listened to like 20 seconds of this guy's music. I think it's kind of like acoustic guitar vibes. I'm not really sure. We're gonna go, we're gonna see how it goes and hopefully I have fun. So I don't know how much reading I will get done tonight, but I'm kind of hoping today that I'll be able to squeeze in some reading here and there. So that's that is my long-winded update. I will talk to you guys in a little bit when I have another reading update for A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows. So happy Thursday. This is going to be a very quick reading check-in. I'm reading two books now. I started another one yesterday and I honestly need to finish both of them today because I really wanna get this vlog up tomorrow. So I'm gonna be quick, but let's just talk about A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee. I'm probably like 75% of the way into this book. I think I have like less than 100 pages. I'm loving this. You guys, this book is so much fun. Like it's exactly what I needed. It is quick. I like the characters. It's fun. It is so spicy, by the way. I I knew it was spicy, but I didn't think it was going to be like this much. And I'm I'm enthralled. I'm excited by this book. I read a scene that I can honestly say I have never read anything like that in my life. And it was a good time. I don't know. It was kind of strange, but like this book is really fun. So like, I think I'm probably going to continue on with this series. I know that there's definitely a second book out. I don't know if there is going to be a third book or if that third book is out, but I will continue on with the series. I am pretty sure depending on how this ends, but I'm honestly really liking the characters and the romance. It's an extremely lust forward romance. There's not a lot of emotions, which is obviously my preferred type of romance. I like that emotional build kind of slow burn. And then there's lust later. This is pretty lust forward, but like it is what it is. And I'm taking this book for what it is and honestly like I'm having a good time. So I am enjoying this book. I'm definitely going to finish this probably in the next hour. And then I decided to start Angel's Blood by Nalani Singh. So this is the first book in the Guild Hunters series. I think that there is like 14 books in this series. This is a completed series that was written kind of in the mid 2000s and this is one of Sarah J Mass's favorite series and it really inspired her and so I wanted to pick it up and you can definitely see the inspiration that Sarah pulled from it and put into her books, which is really, really fun. This book follows Elena. She is a vampire hunter and she gets hired by this archangel to hunt down another archangel, which she has never done before. Very intimidating, but this archangel who hires her, his name is Raphael. He's kind of like very infamous, very well known, and she is sort of fighting an attraction to him. So I am really, really liking this book so far. I think I'm only 
gosh, let me see. I'm probably like 70 pages in, I wanna say, so I'm not too, too far in, but I like the setting so far. It is set in New York City, so definitely like an urban fantasy romance, but I'm really intrigued by the angels and the vampires and their relationship with one another and the power structure. Also, Raphael has this kind of group of friends, and I have heard that there's a lot of found family in this book, so I'm excited about that. And I like our main character, Elena. So I don't know, that's kind of just my initial thoughts, but really excited about this. I'm hopeful that I love this because I want to just read the entire series because I've heard it's a really bingeable series, really, really fun, and lots of spicy romance. So that is the update. Really, really liking these books so far. So that is going to be it for me. I'm gonna hunker down right now and read both of these books. I'm really, really excited. And I will talk to you guys when I am done with them and let you know my final thoughts. Hi friends. So it is a few hours later. I did it. I finished Angel's Blood and the Kingdom of Stars and Shadows back to back. And now I'm here to give you my final thoughts. So let's start with Angel's Blood by Nalini Singh. I think that this was a really solid first book in an urban kind of paranormal fantasy romance. I really, really liked the book more as it went on. I will say I much prefer the second half of the book to the first half. I was a little bit confused in the beginning. I wasn't really sure where things were going or kind of how the world worked, the power structures, so on and so forth. But I did kind of just get more used to the world and the plot and kind of figuring out where things were going. And then I really, really started to enjoy this a lot more. I really liked our main character, Elena. She is a badass and I'm really excited to see her journey, especially with that ending. I am so, so excited to read the next book. As far as the romance goes, I do like the romance. It was a little quick for me. I feel like I am spoiled with slow burn romances all the time. So when I read something that's not like super, super slow burn, I'm kind of like, oh, I wish it was slower, but I don't think it was insta lovey at all or anything like that. There was definitely push and pull between Raphael and Elena, but I do kind of wish that it was a little bit slower, especially because this is a 14 book series. However, there are so many characters in this book and I do have to wonder if maybe we're going to be kind of focusing on different characters and their journeys and maybe their romances. I don't really know. Or if it's just going to follow Elena and Raphael the whole time. I feel like a lot of people say that the books just get better and better as the series goes on. I think that the plot will definitely develop and get very interesting. And regardless, I do think that I'm 100% going to continue on with this series. I really, really liked it. I gave it a four star rating, but I really, really did enjoy the angels and the vampires and just kind of the lore that Nalini Singh has built thus far. So definitely really, really like this and going to continue on with the series for sure. Okay. And then we have A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows. I always like, feel like I'm going to forget that name. And I gave this book four stars as well. I want to say, I want to like kind of note that I don't think everyone will give this book four stars. And if you read this and you gave it like a two or a three star, I would totally understand. Here's the thing. It was really fun and it was very spicy and I'm intrigued and I'm gonna keep reading the series. Like after I finished it, I was like, you know what? I'm definitely gonna pick up the next book. I just think that this book was light and it was entertaining. I liked the romance. As I said earlier, there wasn't like a ton of emotional heart and grip between them. It was very lust forward, but I'm very curious to see what happens. This book also ends in a really big cliffhanger, like kind of in the middle of a scene basically. And I think it sounds really, really cool what's going to happen next and everything. And there's definitely going to continue to be some push and pull between our two love interests which I like that. So while I do think that this book is, you know, kind of, it's a bit more surface level and the plot points were kind of convenient and there was some predictable things that happened. I still had a good time. As I said, I kind of see this the way that I see like a spicy novella in just like the contemporary romance genre where it's like, it's fun, it's spicy, you have a good time, you give it four stars, you might not think too hard about it after that. This might not be a four star for everyone, but I had a really good time and I do rate books just kind of like off of my general enjoyment of them. Of course, there are things that can stick out like if the writing is affecting my enjoyment of the book or if like a certain character or plot points or anything like that but if I walk away from a book and I'm like that was really fun I'm gonna give it a four star rating so both of those books ended up being four stars for me very very happy that I read those all right guys so that is going to be it for this fantasy romance reading vlog if you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know go ahead and leave the like a magical wand emoji as always my Instagram and my Goodreads are linked down below you are welcome to follow me on there at any time I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will catch you all in the next one.